Let's start with the Buffalo Bills, those guys that fell short one more again, uh, and we start with that. I have one. I guess you want to just rotate back and forth, like your first, I'm first kind of deal. Well, yeah, I don't. I think that this is one of them that we didn't pick the same player. On. Okay, this is true. Um, so I'll go with my guy. My guy on the Buffalo Bills is. I think it's fairly obvious that this is the guy. I'm surprised Dave didn't pick him, but I understand why because I do agree with his his choice as well. I just think that this one is going to way outperform all his draft status. Gabriel Davis, last year in the playoffs, this he dude crushed it. Great pick. out. We're talking about a situation <laughs> like that... This is a great, yeah, pick, great, great pick. Great pick. Great great pick. pick. My God, what a great like, pick. Great last pick. year in the postseason, he balled <laughs> out, and Buffalo offense, you would think, is like humming along right now. I think Gabriel Davis is a slightly hum. better version of anything that they've had in the past at the number two alongside Stephon Diggs, yep. and Josh Allen is the odds-on favorite to win the MVP that's not because he's going to be running the football. It's going to be through the air this year. It has to be, right? We all know Josh Allen could run. The step that he's going to take this year is going to be throwing the ball, and he's got a legitimate bona fide number two now that has the confidence that he's building off from last postseason. Mm. And the Buffalo Bills haven't done anything yet, so that's going to be a really hungry team this Would year. Would you say this is probably the best Buffalo Bills team we've seen Ever. Like on paper? In, ever. I would say ever. See, I don't know. They haven't done what I've seen. A Buffalo. Look, the Buffalo Bills made At least four they went to the Super Bowls in the 90s. <laughs> the AFC was really bad at yeah. that time, mm -hmm. I have to say. Yes. Um, but they still made four straight Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. The Buffalo Bills right now, I know maybe this particular unit, this group, I'm not going to put them in over over a team that had like several bona fide Hall of Famers. We have guys on their way maybe in Buffalo right now, but... You know, we're talking about all-time greats at both sides of the ball. Andre Smith, um, Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, Daryl Talley. Did I say Bruce don't, Smith? Don't, don't, don't do dare disrespect or put some respect on my man Don Beebe's name. <laughs> Don Beebe. I met him twice. Got oh, yeah, that's right. He finished yeah, with the Packers, right? Packer. All right. Um, my bill. Uh, he got I, his ring, baby. Don Beebe got his ring. <laughs> yes, he did. Tell you that. Yes, he did. Do you know his going away game and for Buffalo? He got ejected in like the first quarter. Don Beebe? Yeah, it was. Amazing. I forgot what happened. I remember watching He was watching the one that, that of, of all you Cowboys let, fans. Leon Lett fumble. The yeah, Cowboys right? were about Talking to down. set the all-time record for most points scored in the Super Bowl. Leon Lett is bumbling and stumbling down the sidelines. And here comes faithful number 82. I'll never forget it. Don Beebe just comes bolting in and causes a fumble. Yeah, in, and, case, uh, you had, yeah. in case you had Buffalo getting 41, <laughs> right? You did not <laughs> Didn't matter. If you live bet it, I don't know. My bill, if we kept, if we do that long on each team, we'll be here till, till yeah, tomorrow. We won't. My bill is still taking it through the air here, and he mentioned a bunch of receivers. I'm mentioning their tight end. Dawson Knox, I feel like, is going to take that extra step this year and put himself in the elite level of tight ends. He already came on last year. There was a lot of points scored by Dawson Knox. He did get hurt a little bit. Which is why I said, like, fine. I think that Gabriel Davis has a chance to make a real big leap. Dawson Knox, he was like a touchdown machine at some point yeah, last man. year. He was definitely really effective. Patriots, I'm going with Damian Harris. I know it seems like a chalk pick, but he's got himself a, a decent backfield again behind him. Stevenson's back there. I know that they, they still definitely have a Mr. White. He's back there as well. But I think Harris has to be the guy in this offense. Considering the fact I don't think they did Mac Jones any favors, and considering the fact that I don't think they have an offense worth even mentioning at this point, I looked at the defensive side of the ball. I'm sure there's a couple guys that will have some good games and, and a decent season. But like Harris, to me, is the only consistent, constant guy on the Patriots roster right now that could deliver. I don't know about Mac Jones. I don't know about their receivers right yeah, now. It's a tough situation in New England offensively. Um, and Damian Harris, I, I, again, and I'm not saying— Is that your guy? I'm not. No, no, no. Oh. I'm not saying that I think Damian Harris isn't going to be— it, isn't going to have a better season, but I feel like he's the Patriot that's going to get drafted first, right? If you're looking at the entire New England Patriots roster, it's like Damian Harris is clearly going to go earlier. I'm trying to maybe find a guy that might not go that high, and then I'm looking at Devontae Parker as the only option because he's in a new spot. But I'd still, like, he's is had Neil still seasons. there, or they caught him yet? Who? Neil? Nikhil Ke Harry? Uh, Harry. I think him. he's still there, but I'm... Up and down the New England offense, I'm, I'm struggling to find that one breakout player because Devontae Parker had a really good season in Miami. So I'm looking at the, them letting go of J.C. Jackson, them letting go of um, Stephon Gilmore. My sneaking suspicion is that they have somebody or two guys that are going to step up and play good in the secondary. So I'm going to pick random cornerback New England Patriots breakout <laughs> player. Good pick, good pick, solid pick. Uh, let's move over to the New York football Jets, ladies and germs. So I know you have a different one than I do again. I'm going to, again, chalk pick, but it's one of those picks that like... Are we doing Dolphins? No, we're doing the Jets. No, we have the same one. We, we have the same one for the Jets? 
Yeah. I thought you had a... All right. Well, then anyway, then we both have Zach Wilson. Oh, no, we don't. All right. <laughs> I, I said that. So, Zach Wilson... Welcome to the show, Right. Baby. For me, Zach Wilson's the guy that... Ha- like, it's not even like, will he take the next step? He has to take the next step. For this Jets team to be confident in the fact that they drafted the right guy. Again, does it pay off after one year? Not all the time. Sometimes, mo- more times than not, I would say that... The, when you draft a quarterback in the first round, he's not going to just take you to the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? It's just it's not one of those things. I think he has to take this next step. That's why Zach Wilson, by default, is my guy. Yeah. Looking up and down the Jets roster, there's about eight guys, really. The, the Jets have a chance to have a significant <laughs> improvement this season because of the amount of young talent that they have. Like I'm talking about blue-chip guys, early early draft picks that are linemen at skill positions. So the Jets have loaded up on talent, and now it's about putting it together – you say Zach Wilson. I think this goes hand in hand. Elijah Moore. If one That's, guy is going to, got a couple guys in the chat saying so more. So is Elijah Moore. So if so, be so. I think that you could look across the offensive line, and there's some guys on the offensive line, but it's a little less attractive because they're not going to be drafted in fantasy. But yeah, all through and through, even Robert Sala, I think, has a chance to like make a leap this year. Damn it, that was a good one. Did I would I would have said Salah. Did- uh, let's move on to Miami again. Is this kind of obvious? We both have the same guy here. I think no. It- all right, then go ahead. Tua. What? <laughs> you can you can like you can do you don't think, over you again don't if think, you want. You don't you think Tua re, has a chance to, to fit, rethink You this? don't think if you're looking at the, the roster, you're going to say Jalen Waddle probably, right? I'm going to say Waddle, yes, Jalen Waddle. But Jalen Waddle, I believe he set the rookie record for receptions last year, so he's really good. You know, Tyreek Hill getting But I there. said that. I did preface the entire topic by saying, like, break out and or stay on the course and, and oh, keep right. going. Well, you know, like, yeah. I think he's obviously he's going to improve on maybe even improve on his numbers from last year. I don't think he's going to have the receptions total, but I think he'll have a little bit more of a big play ability. Well, he's got Hill. But if you're looking at the guy that's going to inherit the most opportunity to improve, it's the guy that now has a bona fide deep threat and true top five receiver in football added to the roster in addition to Jalen Waddle. So with the new coach, everything. I'm saying it's got to be Tua because it's not hard to improve on what he had last year, and there's a chance that. They're going to win a ton of games, and they're going to win games by a lot of points because their offense is loaded. 